about 15 years ago, I come home from work one Saturday and Lorraine was watching the TV and she was watching golf. And I said, I didn't know you liked golf. And she said, I don't. But she said, I just changing channels and I saw this playing golf. And she said, I thought I'd watch it. It seemed I might start liking it. And I said, well, I've got some golf clubs in there. And I said, I don't go much. I said, if you want to use mine, you can. I said, there's a golf course about 10 miles below Decatur, down south of Decatur. She said, well, I think I'll go Monday. And I said, well, they'll even, they'll even give you instructions. So she goes Monday, and I come home from work Monday. And I said, how'd it go? And she said, well, it went all right. She said, I'm going to go back again Friday. And I said, well, are you taking lessons? And she said, yeah. She said, the instructor already started with me. <clears throat> so I come home Friday. And I said, how'd it go? She said, I must be doing real good, because he said, I've done all I can do for you. <laughs> and <laughs> so, so she said, uh, I'm going to go, I'm go tomorrow. And I said, well, I don't have to work tomorrow. I'll go with you. And I just, I want to watch you. So we go up there. Come to the first hole, and the first, uh, and you have to drive the ball across the pond to get to the, to the green. And uh, she said, uh, Roger, she said, I, I got to confess to you. She said, I've never been able to drive it over there. She said, I always hit it and it goes in the pond. She said, the instructor told me, he said, since you don't ever get it over there anyway, don't use a new ball, a golf ball. Get one of your old scuffed up, dirty ones. And she said, that's what I've been doing. So she's walking toward the, to put her ball down on the uh, tee. And she said, dear Lord, Roger's here watching me. He said, please let me be able to hit that ball over that, <laughs> that pond. And the uh, Lord said, well, Lorraine said, but you're going to have to trust me now. And he said, uh, put that new ball up there. Put the new ball up there. You've you got to trust me. So she puts the new ball up there and she starts to swing. And he said, tell you the truth, Lorraine, I've been kind of busy and hadn't got to see you play. He said, stand back and take a couple of practice swings. So she stands back, takes a practice swing and starts to step up there. And he said, uh, try that one more time. So she tries one more practice swing. And he said, Lorraine, put that old scuffed up ball back up there. <laughs> Just teasing that. That didn't happen. I just told that little story because God does answer our prayers. He might not answer the way we want it to, but God does answer prayers. And uh, the prophet Jeremiah, back in the biblical days, he, he wasn't very popular because he was telling what God wanted him to do. What it, God wanted him to prophesy, he was telling them. People didn't like it, so they threw him in jail. And he had been prophesying that, <clears throat> that Babylonians were going to uh, put Judah, the, overtake Judah and, and uh, rule over them. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me. We're going to, today we want to look at <clears throat> his prayer. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to uh, Jeremiah 32, 16 and 17. This is the prayer he starts out with. <clears throat> and then we're going to look at the answer, God's answer. Jeremiah 32, 16 and 17. Verse 16, After I had given the deed of purchase to Barak, the son of Nera, then I prayed to the Lord, saying, Ah, Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Nothing is too difficult to you. Now that's the start of his prayer. Now turn over a couple of pages to uh, Jeremiah 33, verses 1 to 3. God answers his prayer. 33, verse 1. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the second time, while he was still confined in the court of the guard, saying, Thus saith the Lord God, thus saith the Lord who made the earth, the Lord who formed it, it to establish it. The Lord is his name. Call to me, and I will answer you, and I will tell you great and mighty things which you do not know. That's the key verse I want us to look at today. God says, Call to me, and I will answer you. And I will tell you great and mighty things which you do not know. Let's pray. Oh, Father God, we thank you today, Lord, that you do answer prayers. That we can have confidence when we come to you knowing that you are hearing our prayer. And you will answer it. It may not be the, uh, the result and the way we want it answered. Or it might not be the, what we wanted answered. But you will answer our prayers. And we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you that we have a great God that loves us and cares for us. 
And you can see the future. You know what the future holds. You know because you control it. You're in complete control, God, and we just thank you for it. And God, just help us to always turn to you and go to you in prayer. And Lord, we, I just ask, Lord, that uh, you open our ears today, Lord, and, and Lord, uh, let me not say anything that would, that would hurt anybody's uh, feelings or anything, but Lord, just to lift you up and just deliver your word and, and say what you'd have me to say. And we love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That's about to follow. And this verse, <clears throat> when, uh, verse 3 is one we're looking at now. This is God's answer. He says, God says, call to me. You know, He wants to hear from us. He says, call on me because He wants to hear from us. God wants to hear from us. He don't want us to go through life trying to live this Christian life on our own. He wants us uh, to hear from us. He says, call on me. And he says, he wants to know our innermost thoughts, our, our feelings, our wants. He wants to know uh, everything there is to know about us. He already knows them, but he wants us to, to talk to him about them. And God says, call on me and I will answer you. You know, do you really believe that God's going to answer you? Sometimes I think that we, we think, well, God, I know you're able, but are you going to answer me? Will you answer me? We know we, we've read about He's answered other prayers, but sometimes I think we feel, are you going to answer me? Will you answer me? But God will answer. I, I can promise you He will answer you one way or the other. God says, I will answer you. And He says, He might say yes, He might answer no, or He might say to wait. That's the tough one, the wait. That tries our patience when, when we have to wait. If He says yes, sometimes God answers our prayers right, right away. And sometimes he says no, because he says no sometimes because it's not best for us. So God can not say no and tell us no. But he knows what's best for us. Romans 8, 28 says, And we know that God causes all things to work together for the good to those who love him and those who are called according to his purpose. God says that he will tell us great and mighty things that you do not know. You know, we as human beings, we're limited in, in our knowledge. We don't know God can see the giant picture. He can see the whole picture. He knows it all. And we're just limited to our little... It's like working a, a jigsaw puzzle. God sees the whole puzzle completed. And here we are working at a piece at a time. And that's all we can see one piece of time. We can't see the future. God can. So sometimes He knows. Uh, he always knows. God is omniscient. It means all-knowing. He knows everything. There's nothing we can hide from God. He knows everything. I had read a story. I don't know if this is true or not. It's, they say it is. But there was a small town in Texas. And they had a, a nightclub there. And, and uh, it's drawing a lot of people uh, to, to the nightclub. And there's drinking and, and going on. And, and uh, he was going to add on to it and make the building even bigger. So the people in that town got together. And, and every, for a week, every night, they went and prayed that God would intervene and cause something to happen. The Friday night before it was scheduled to open, lightning struck it and it burned down. <clears throat> now this is the catchy part. The guy that owned the building, the guy that owned the bar, takes, uh, had heard about them praying to, to, uh, for God to intervene and they, he takes it to court and he sues the people in the church saying that they caused it to burn down because they were praying. And the people from the church get to lawyer and they say that didn't have nothing to do with it. So here, here the judge is sitting up there, and here's what he says. He says, I don't know how I'm going to decide this, but it appears from the paperwork we have an atheist bar owner who doesn't believe in God, but believes in the power of prayer. And we have, we have a church that does believe in God, but denies the power of prayer. So <laughs> I don't know how he decided that case, what he said to but. Uh, here the atheists don't even believe in God, but he's suing them because God called it to uh, intervene and called it to burn. And the church said, no, our prayer didn't have nothing to do with it. Why were we praying? Why were they praying if they, if they say their prayer didn't have nothing to do with it? But it, it's just, uh, but God is concerned with everything we're concerned with. You know, he, he's concerned about our dreams, our wants, our needs, our hurts, our pains. God is concerned. God wants to, wants to be there for us. I think a lot of times we think that God is, is an old man. Uh, we think he's like an old man up there and he's just waiting some reason to punish. I'm going to punish them for that and that and that. God wants what's best for us. If He punishes it, us, it's because we're doing something we shouldn't be doing and He knows what's best for us. We've got to, we got to know that. that God, 
<coughs> wants what's best for it. We need to believe that God is able to answer prayers. Ephesians 3 and 20 says, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we can ask or and think according to the power that works within us. God can do anything. God can, he can do anything. We, we can't put God in a box and limit him on what he can do. God can do anything he wants to. He fulfills his desire and his will. And there's nothing we can do to stop it. The secret to an answer prayer is to pray. You know, that's a resource that we have. And it's a blessing that we can go to the God in prayer. In the Old Testament, in the old days, in Old Testament times, people have to go uh, to a tabernacle and go through a priest. And a priest would go in for them. And they'd bring sacrifices and sacrifice uh, goats, uh, lambs, and, and different animals. But since Jesus died on the cross, He's the Lamb of God, the perfect, sinless Lamb of God. And now we can go directly to God because of what Jesus did. And that's a privilege that we need to... Uh, do more of. I think too many times <clears throat> David Jeremiah once said he said I've never in all my years of ministry I have never had anybody come to me and say Pastor Jeremiah I've got a problem. I think I just pray entirely too much because you can't pray too much. We're supposed to have an attitude of prayer at all times. You know, it's, it's a command that comes up from God. It's not a suggestion. God says, call on me and I will answer you. It's like someone, it's like Sam saying, uh, uh, you know, if an important person like a, a governor or somebody important would give you their phone number and says, anything come up, you call me. Well, we'd jump on that, wouldn't we? But here we've got one, a God that's almighty, all-knowing, almighty, Gives us that same invitation. Call on me and I'll answer you. And he's far more powerful than any governor or any president or any politician. So we need to take advantage of that. Call on me and I will answer you. He gives us that promise. He says, here's my number. Call me and I'll answer you. No problem is too big. And no promise is too difficult for God to answer. Paul tells us to pray without ceasing. Now that doesn't mean that Pray without ceasing doesn't mean always be mulling a prayer. or It means be in the attitude of prayer. Be in touch with God and, be in, and able, in a second's notice be able to say, God help me or God thank you. It's being in that attitude of prayer. It's not going around mumbling prayers all day long. It's just being in that attitude. We should be like as, as, as normal as breathing is to us. We should have that, that same attitude toward prayer. Just be in touch with God and think of Him at all times and knowing that He's there listening, waiting on us to it. And this text we just read, Judah was, uh, had been, uh, come under captivity of the Babylonians and Jeremiah was praying to God. 32 and 17 he says, O Lord God, behold you yourself have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Nothing is too difficult for you. There's nothing too, diff for, too difficult for God. God is omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent. He knows all. He sees all. He's all powerful. And He's here everywhere. He's everywhere. He's everywhere all the time. And He can be there. He can be here and He can be in Texas or He can be everywhere all the time. He is everywhere at the same time. It's our little old infinite minds can't comprehend that. But he, he is here. He's everywhere. He says, We're two or three together in my name. There I am amongst them. So He's here right now. Can you, just, you just have to imagine. It's not imagination. It's knowing. You just have to know that He's here. And He's available to listen to us. No problem is too difficult for God to handle. Jeremiah said, O Lord God, behold, You Yourself have made the heavens and the earth by Your great power and Your outstretched hand. Nothing is too hard for You. Jeremiah is really saying, Lord, if You can make the universe, the stars, and all the heavens, then You can handle my little problem. Whatever it is, You're able to handle it. God cannot lie. He, he keeps His word. It's impossible for God to lie. So we can trust in Him and trust Him to uh, answer our prayer. Paul exhorted Pastor Timothy. He said, let your, request be, <clears throat> let your request be made known to God. James declared, you have not because you ask not. You know, too many times I think we're like, you've been in the buildings before where they have a little glass thing and on it says, break in case of emergency. I think sometimes we do God like that. We don't talk to Him or pray to Him. 
unless we have emergency comes up, and then, and a lot of times we don't even go to him then. That should be the first place we go, not just an emergency. We should talk to him when things are going good. It, it's it's easy to talk to God when things are going good, but when things are going bad, you know, a lot of times we get down and. But that is the first source. That, that's a great source, and that's who we need to go to. Take it to the Lord in prayer. I'm going to read you a couple of Bible verses. It says, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 and 18 says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. Well, that's a tough one. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. First, First John 5 and 14, this is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And First Chronicles 7 and 14, and oh, how we need this, how, as a nation, how we need this. If my people who are called by my name, now, that's not talking about the world in general, that's talking about Christians. He says, if my people, that's us, who are called by my name, and we're called by His name as being Christians, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Now there's some conditions there. He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. Humble means to yield to the authority of God, submit to God and yield to His authority. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their land. I heard a story the other day about a man He'd been, he had a little single engine airplane and he was a flying and uh, he'd, he'd no, looked down at his gauge and, and it said empty and his plane started sputtering. So he, he called the tower and he says, pilot to tower, pilot to tower, I have an emergency. Over and the tower says, what's your emergency? And the, the pilot says, well, <clears throat> I'm 300 miles away from the tower. He said, my plane's gas tank says empty, the engine's sputtering, and my, I'm descending very fast. What should I do? The tower says, tower to pilot, tower to pilot. Repeat after me. Our Father who art in heaven, that will be thy name. <laughs> so, so that, that, but he should have prayed before he left, left Adam. And maybe the Lord would give him wisdom and check his gas tank and see if he had. But prayer is, is, for the most part, as Christians, the most powerful resource we have outside of, uh, you know, that's most, that's the greatest thing God's ever given us outside of His salvation. It's talked about more than anything else and practiced less than anything else. But God says He will show us great and mighty things. In Jeremiah's day, the great, the great and mighty things was uh, uh, God would return Israel back to Jerusalem in great glory. At that time, they were overtaken by the most powerful nation, Babylon, under the threat of the most powerful king, Nebuchadnezzar, on earth. For us, that great mighty thing, uh, mighty thing might be blessings from God if we just simply yield ourselves to Him, submit to Him, yield to His authority. God knows what's best for us. He knows exactly what we need. When He says, I call, it means when we say in our prayer, when He says, I call on the Lord, and we say, I call, we're asking God. We said, I'm calling on you, Father. I'm calling on you and I'm asking. That's a request we start off with. <clears throat> Matthew 7 and verses 7 through 8 says, Ask and it be, shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door will be opened. For everyone that asketh receiveth and he that seeketh findeth and him that knocketh it shall be opened. We need to ask the one that, who can deliver us. Don't ask the little statue Buddha we all know little Buddha, the little statues. You've seen him in different places. A little bald-headed man sitting there. And I, when I was in Vietnam, they, had, they believed a lot of that Buddha. And they had little statues everywhere, a little bald-headed man. And uh, don't call on Buddha. Don't write Dear Abby or Ann Landers. They can't do nothing about your problem. Call on our living God. Call on our living God that, that is all-powerful and, and can do something about our problem. Not no man-made idols and... and uh, uh, different things like that. Call on God. Ask, ask the one that can, can deliver it. Ask Jehovah Eliam, the great and eternal creator. Jehovah Adonai, the Lord God, our sovereign master. Jehovah. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that will provide. Jehovah Nissi, the Lord our banner. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. 
Jehovah Shalom, the Lord of peace. We do not ask somebody, we do not ask hopings, someone will answer. We can ask knowing God will answer. When we pray, we should expect to hear from God. God wants us to show our faith. <clears throat> when we say we have faith, God wants us to prove it. He wants us to show it. Hebrews 11, 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You know, when uh, Jesus came walking on the water out, and the disciples were on the boat, and Jesus came walking on the water, and some of them thought he was a ghost. And uh, uh, Peter saw was Jesus walking, and he said, It's the Lord. Jesus said, don't be afraid. It's I. He said, it's me. It's me. Peter said, Lord God, if that be, Lord Jesus, if that be you, bid me to walk to you. And Jesus said, come ahead, Peter. And Peter starts out walking and he uses, he demonstrates his faith. He takes that step out on the water and that demonstrates his faith and he starts walking. The problem is he lets his circumstances around him lose his focus on Jesus and he, and he starts seeing the waves and the, and the storms. And he loses his focus and he starts going down and he reaches out his hand and says, save me. And Jesus pulls him up out of the water. So we need to step out in faith and don't lose our focus. Our focus is on the Lord. That's where the power is. It's in the Lord. Philippians 1.16 says, being confident in this one very thing, that he who began a work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> in Philippians 2 and 13 says, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and do is for His good pleasure. When He says, show you great and mighty things, He's talking about showing us things that's best for us. God's promise was true. Jeremiah was in prison, but his life was, was in hearing and speaking the message of God. Even in the pit, he was able to talk to God. God will speak to us if we'll only listen. He has given us His Word and He has given us His Holy Spirit to be able to discern and keep, to keep it. Even when, we have, when we, even when we read the Bible hundreds of times, if we keep on reading the Bible and studying God's Word, I've never opened it up and read to, uh, to any amount of time what something that I've seen before and read before, but something different comes out. It, God will bring something. That, you could read this through this Bible a hundred times and every time you'd see something different. It's a living Word of God. And there's always something that comes out of there. You'll never, come to, you'll never be able to close it and say, well, I don't need it anymore. I've read it. Every time you open it, there's something different that comes out. That's <clears throat> Prayer is the most untapped resource that we have. I think it's the most untapped. I think we all need to work on our prayer life. I know I do. We need to be committed and don't quit and, and uh, don't give up. And we feel like it's only when emergency comes along. But the Bible says pray without ceasing. Our prayers should be prayed with a purpose. You know, too many times I think we say a, a general prayer like, uh, oh, dear Lord, I pray for the missionaries or, oh, dear Lord, I pray for the lost. Sometimes we need to make it personal. If you know a missionary's name, say, I pray for certain, certain missionary or somebody that's lost, a personal, make it personal and pray the name. That way we know when God answers, when, like you pray for a person to be saved that you know and you love and pray that the Lord will save them and they come to, to, to Lord Jesus Christ and are saved, then you'll know to give God praise and glory. You'll know that that's happened. But so make it personal. Don't just make all your prayers general. And I mean, it's, right, it's good to pray for all the missionaries and pray for a country and all that. But sometimes we need to make it personal. Make it on a personal level. And pray with persistence. Now there's a difference in saying a long prayer and a persistent prayer. Persistence means pray continually. Over. Don't just give up. Don't just pray one time and, and quit. Just pray with persistence. Jesus taught parables about praying with persistence. <clears throat> Be persistent in your prayer. <clears throat> Don't ever give up. I, I read a joke a couple of years ago about a little girl was watching her grandmother at night. Her grandmother was putting on the cold cream on her face and the little girl was standing there watching her. And she said, Grandma, what are you doing that for? What are you doing? She said, Honey, I'm putting this cold cream on to make me beautiful. And about five minutes later, she takes a tissue and takes it off. And the little girl says, Grandma, you're giving up already. So <laughs> we need to be persistent in our prayers and don't ever give up. Oh, goodness gracious, these people prayed for me for years. And I'm sure there's a lot of people say, Boy, that's wasting prayer because I'd turn from the Lord and living my life. I, did, I was doing it like Frank Sinatra said, I was doing it my way. 
when I should have been doing it his way. But prayer paid off all those years and years of praying. So God brought me to my knees and humbled me. And I thank Him every day for it. Every time now I see somebody that's out doing something they shouldn't be doing, I think, but by Your grace, God, that could have been me. We need to stay humble before Almighty God. And don't ever give up from praying. Lord, and I can answer this, this morning a special prayer. <clears throat> God. Her son, my stepson, Lauren's son, but he's the same as mine. He had a stroke about three months ago. He got saved. Sometimes God uses strong measures to humble us and bring us down. Now, thank God he's in church every Sunday, Sunday night, and every Wednesday night he won't miss. Give God praise all the time. So don't ever stop praying because God is faithful to hear our prayers and answer our prayer. So we need to pray with persistence. There's examples in the Bible of people praying, being persistent in prayer. Hannah prayed for a son. And she, about it, she cried out to God said, Oh God, give me a son. I'll dedicate him to you. Give me a child, a son. I'll dedicate him to you. God answered that prayer. And she had Samuel a great prophet of God. And she dedicated him to God. Elijah prayed that the, the uh, Jezebel, Queen Jezebel had sent a bunch of people out to kill Elijah. And the, the, the prophets of, uh, they had a bunch of prophets and they were all crying out and, uh, to their God. And nothing happened. And Elijah was making fun of them. He said, what's the matter with your God? Is he asleep or what? He, he don't want to hear from him. God called on his mighty God and, and he sent fire down and a lightning fire down and even licked up the water and burnt the offering. Elijah prayed that God would get the glory and God did get the glory. So, so answer prayers have been answered in the Bible. All through the Bible, God answers prayers. David prayed for forgiveness after all the things. He, and David was a man after God's own heart. He made a lot of bad decisions like we all have. But God answered his prayer. We need to pray with passion when we pray. Hezekiah prayed with passion. You know, God had told the <clears throat> prophet Isaiah to tell Hezekiah that get, get everything in order. Get your life straightened out. Get everything in order because you're going to die. So Isaiah went and told him that. <clears throat> and uh, Hezekiah said, he made a prayer. He, he turned his face to the wall and he prayed and he says, Oh Lord, I ask you from my heart to remember now <clears throat> how I have walked with you in truth and with a whole heart. I have done what is good in your eyes. And Hezekiah cried with a bitter cry. And here's what God did. He told Hezekiah, he told uh, Isaiah said, you go tell Hezekiah that I have heard his prayers and I've seen his tears. And he added 15 years on his life. So God wants to hear our, when we pray a prayer with passion. Just like Hezekiah said, he wept bitterly and said, God, he said, I've been faithful to you. And God said, I've heard your prayer and I've seen your tears. So he added 15 years to his life. And when God answers our prayers, don't just sit there and, and give God praise. Tell people what he's done. Tell people what he's done in your life. Uh, just let people know what God is. That we serve a mighty God and he's able to do all these things. And we need to... Uh, James says in uh, James 5 and 16, the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. Fervent means, the English word fervent <clears throat> means impassioned, forceful, passionate, heartfelt, powerful, or wholehearted. That's what we want. That's a fervent prayer when we pray wholehearted, a, a, a prayer full of passion. Pray with thankfulness. Paul never failed to mention it. <clears throat> In Ephesians 5 and 20, he says, Tell us that thanksgiving is a natural result of being filled with and walking with, under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Philippians 4 and 6 tells us to be anxious for nothing, but in everything we should pray for giving thanks as we make our petitions known to God. <clears throat> 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18 says, giving thanks at all times, and God will deliver us in Jesus Christ. Colossians 3 and 17 says, 
that as believers, everything we say or do should be done in the name of the Lord Jesus as we give thanks to Him. And pray making intercession, interceding for other people. Don't, when we pray, we shouldn't always be praying, giving God a list. Do this for me. Do that for me. Pray for other people. Intercede for other people. Pray for them. Jesus interceded when He prayed. He prayed for other people. He interceded a lot. That's what we should do. Prayer forces us sometimes to wait. And that's a hard one. But we sometimes we have to... And that, that helps. Sometimes when we pray, we, like, we don't have the patience. And that prayer sometimes gives us more patience because we know we have to wait for God. Sometimes God has to set things up for Him that, to, to come through. He might be saying, now, I'm going to answer it, but just give me time. I've got to work some things out. And that's what He does. He sets things up and then He'll answer one way or the other. Then He'll either deliver or, or say, maybe I shouldn't do that. Prayer opens our spiritual ears. Prayer enables us to move forward. God hears our prayers. Philippians, Psalm 61, 1 and 2 says, Hear my cry, O Lord. Listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth I'll call to you. I'll call as my heart grows faint. Let me lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And in closing, I love the song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. But one of the verses in there says this. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we wouldn't carry everything to God in prayer. If you have any <clears throat> need this morning or any special need, or if you're, if you're in need of salvation, if you haven't trusted the Lord God, the Lord Jesus as your Savior, and you need to be, and you want to, we're going to have the musicians come and give an invitation, give a sing a song, and invite you. If the altar is open. If you have any need at all, you can bring it to the Lord in prayer. And that's what we're going to do. We're just going to have a, if you will, stand, if you're able to stand, and we'll sing a song. And if God has spoke to you in any way and you need anything, these altars are open. Hymn number 347. To Jesus I surrender, all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all.